In 1996, International Conference on Harmonization, ICH, issued the Good Clinical Practice, GCP Guideline, as an international ethical and scientific quality standard for designing, conducting, recording, and reporting trials that involve the participation of human subjects. Main goal of the guideline was to provide a unified standard for global conduct of clinical trials, and to protect safety and well-being of human subjects who participate in these trials. From the time it was issued, GCP was adopted as a global standard for conduct of clinical trials. In this video we shall cover historic events that preceded, and which directly or indirectly led to development of good clinical practice as an international guideline. Throughout history, early researchers tried to demonstrate efficiency of the early drugs and herbs in various ways. First records, of what resembles to a clinical research, can be found in the book of Daniel in the Bible, when King of Babylon conducted a test to compare two types of diet. In 1537, French surgeon Ambroise Pere was forced to experiment with a new treatment after he ran out of standard treatment for care of the injured soldiers in the battle. This can be considered as a first clinical trial of a novel therapy. He treated wounded soldiers with mixture of egg yolk, oil of roses and turpentine instead of burning oil, the standard treatment at that time. After reviewing the results on wounded soldiers treated with standard treatment in a new treatment, new treatment showed much better results. In 1747, James Lent, surgeon on board the ship HMS Salisbury conducted first controlled clinical trial with comparative treatment in history. He selected 12 scurvy affected sailors with similar symptoms. He divided the 12 sick sailors into six pairs. Every pair was provided with a different supplement to their diet. The goal of the experiment was to compare the food supplements most promising to cure scurvy. Lind observed recovery progress of every treatment group. The pair who took oranges and lemons, as part of their diet, were the first who recovered. Results of this experiment will eventually lead to use of lemon juice to prevent scurvy in sailors. In 1863, United States physician Austin Flint, introduced use of the placebo in a drug trial. He treated 13 patients suffering from rheumatism with his dummy placebo remedy and then he compared results with that of the active treatment's already known results. Flint's examination did not compare the two treatments against each other in the same trial. Even so, this was a significant departure from the standard practice of reviewing the consequences of an active treatment only. In 1943, the British Medical Research Council, carried out a trial to investigate patulin treatment as a possible treatment for the common cold. This was the first double-blind comparative trial in history. Double-blind trials are the trials in which neither the participant nor the researcher knows which medication the participant is taking. This eliminates bias when interpreting results. The trial was rigorously controlled to keep the physician and the patient blinded to the treatment. The final result of the trial did not show any protective effect of patulin. However, this was a big step forward towards clinical trials as we know today. In 1948, the first trial with a properly randomized control group was performed. The aim of the trial was to test the efficacy of the chemical streptomycin for curing pulmonary tuberculosis. The trial was both double-blind and placebo-controlled. The trial compared patients treated with streptomycin in bed rest versus bed rest alone. Randomized controlled trials are the gold standard of clinical trial designs in a modern day. All these events were positive in their nature, and they made the way to clinical trials as we know today. However, more severe impact on development of good clinical practice as international guideline for conduct of clinical trials, had the negative events recorded in human history. These events were also a trigger for creation, or improvement of the existing regulatory frames. First event that had direct impact to improving existing regulatory frame, was event known as elixir sulfonilamide disaster. The product was formulated in diethylene glycol, a highly toxic solvent that is now widely used as antifreeze. In 1937, over 100 people died after ingesting elixir sulfonilamide. This tragedy, and similar previous events like a lash lar, an eyelash dye which caused blindness and radithor, a radium-containing tonic with toxic effects, led to Federal Food Drug and Cosmetic Act from 1938, which replaced existing Pure Food and Drug Act from 1906 in United States. Pure Food and Drug Act from 1906, was the first federal law regulating foods and drugs in the United States. The basis of the law, rested on the regulation of product labeling rather than pre-market approval. Food Drug and Cosmetic Act from 1938, introduced significant improvements compared with previous law. The new law brought cosmetics and medical products under control, and it required that drugs be labeled with adequate directions for safe use. Moreover, 
it mandated pre-market approval of all new drugs, such that a manufacturer would have to prove to FDA, that a drug was safe before it could be sold. Other significant problem in medical research, which also led to regulatory improvement, was involuntary participation of human subjects in medical experiments. Throughout history, there are evidence of experiments on prisoners, mental patients, minority groups and other participants that were forced or were, unaware of participation in medical research. War crimes, committed by the Nazis during World War II, eventually led to the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg in 1946. As a part of Nuremberg trials, separate trial for war crimes of German doctors was held. These trials brought to light, inhumane and unethical medical procedures and experiments on humans in concentration camps. This led to the Nuremberg Code, a set of research ethics principles for human experimentation. Nuremberg Code, was a significant milestone on the road to GCP. This document was drafted on August 9, 1947, and it contains 10 points. These 10 points forms the backbone of GCP, and they are a base for various laws and regulations throughout the world. Most important point of Nuremberg Code, is the voluntary consent of the human subject for participation in clinical trial or any other form of experiment. This means that the person involved, should have legal capacity to give consent, should be so situated, as to be able to exercise free power of choice, without the intervention of any element of force, fraud, deceit, duress, overreaching, or other ulterior form of constraint, or coercion. Also, human subject has the right to stop his or her participation in experiment, as well as the researcher has the power to terminate the experiment at any stage, if he or her, has probable cause to believe that experiment is likely to result in injury, disability, or death to the human subject. All other points of Nuremberg Code, have a significant importance with regards of protection of rights and well-being of human subjects. Another tragic event forced European countries to improve their laws and regulations. In the late 1950s, and early 1960s, the use of thalidomide in pregnant women in 46 countries resulted in the biggest man-made medical disaster ever, resulting in more than 10,000 children born with a range of severe deformities, such as phocomelia, as well as thousands of miscarriages. Thalidomide was introduced in 1956, under the trade name Kindergan, as a medication for anxiety, sleeping problems, tension, and morning sickness. While initially deemed to be safe in pregnancy, concerns regarding birth defects were noted in 1961, and the medication was removed from the market in Europe that year. The total number of people affected by the use of thalidomide during the mother's pregnancy, is estimated at more than 10,000, of whom approximately 40% died at birth, or shortly after the time of birth. Those who survived had severe defects. The birth defects of thalidomide, led to the development of better drug regulation and control in many countries. Following the thalidomide tragedy, in 1963, United Kingdom government, set up a committee to investigate and control introduction of new medicines. In June 1963, the Committee on Safety of Drugs, CSD, was established, and in 1968, the Medicines Act was adopted. In June 1964, another significant milestone in history of GCP was reached. In Helsinki, Finland, a declaration was adopted which gave a set of ethical principles regarding medical research involving human subjects. Declaration was adopted by World Medical Association, WMA General Assembly, and although it is not a legally binding instrument under the international law, is morally binding the physicians. Nuremberg Code and Declaration of Helsinki represent the foundation on which GCP was built. However, these huge steps in implementing ethical principles and protection of safety and well-being of human subjects in clinical trial environment did not prevent inhumane and unethical medical procedures. In 1972, a story about Tuskegee syphilis experiment came to the newspaper. Tuskegee syphilis experiments started in 1932, initiated by the Public Health Service in collaboration with Tuskegee Institute. The experiment lasted until 1972. The goal of the trial was to observe the natural history of untreated syphilis in the African-American male population. For participation in the study, the men were promised free medical care but were deceived by the public health service, who never informed subjects about their diagnosis, despite the risk of infecting others, and the fact that the disease could lead to serious consequence. None of the infected men were treated, they were administered disguised placebos, ineffective methods, and diagnostic procedure, which were misrepresented as treatment for syphilis. The victims of the study included numerous men who died of syphilis, 40 wives who contracted the disease, and 19 children born with congenital syphilis, even though from 1947, 
The antibiotic was widely available and had become the standard treatment for syphilis. Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment led to Belmont Report, issued in 1978, by National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research. The Belmont Report summarizes ethical principles and guidelines for research involving human subjects. Three core principles are identified, as respect for persons, beneficence, and justice. Three primary areas of application are also stated. They are informed consent, assessment of risks and benefits, and selection of subject. Increase of regulatory control, creation of various guidelines regarding conduct of clinical trials during 1960s and 1970s, saw the birth of the idea about regulatory harmonization. Clinical trials were conducted in various countries all over the world. Diversity in regulatory requirements varied from country to country, and forced the pharma industry to duplicate many time-consuming and expensive test procedures in order to market new products internationally. European countries were the first to start with the process of harmonization. During 1980s, Europe started development of a single market as a part of creation of European Union. Success of Europe in creation of a single market for pharmaceuticals, led to dialogue with Japan and United States about harmonization of regulatory requirements for research and marketing of medical products. In 1989, during World Health Organization Conference of Drug Regulatory Authorities in Paris, first plans were set for creation of International Harmonization Committee. In April 1990, at a meeting in Brussels, representatives of the regulatory agencies and industry associations of Europe, Japan and the United States met, primarily, to plan an international conference. During this meeting, the International Conference on Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use, ICH, was created. Since its creation, ICH, develop and implement various harmonized guidelines and standards. Topics selected for harmonization are divided into following subcategories. Q. Quality Guidelines. S. Safety Guidelines. E. Efficacy Guidelines. M. Multidisciplinary Guidelines. Efficacy Guideline No. 6, Guideline for Good Clinical Practice, GCP, was finalized in 1996 with detailed description of the responsibilities and expectations of all participants in the conduct of clinical trials. Good Clinical Practice, GCP Guideline, was amended in 2016, with an integrated addendum, to encourage implementation of improved and more efficient approaches for the conduct of clinical trials. Now, the GCP is a global standard for conduct of clinical trials all over the world.